So, we started discussing about two dimensional NMR spectroscopy in the last class. We introduced the general concept in a qualitative manner. We said this principle is like this that you have a time axis like this and you divide the time into multiple into two different segments and which we, in multiple segments we call the first one as the preparation period and then you have the evolution we call it evolution and labeled it as T1 period. Then we had the so called mixing here and then we had this detection and which is where we actually collect our FIDs and this is the time period T2. So, we collect a series of FIDs incrementing the time T1 from one experiment to another experiment therefore, this will result in a two dimensional data body T1, T2 and you do a two dimensional Fourier transformation this will generate a two dimensional spectrum which we call as F1, F2 or sometimes people also use this as omega 1, omega 2 it does not matter either way it is the same thing. We need a two dimensional Fourier transformation. So, the concept which you have to uh, be clear is that this is segmentation of the time axis. So, the idea can be extended further to multiple dimensions as well. You are introducing one evolution time T1, you can introduce other evolution times, you can use 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Then accordingly, we will generate various kinds of evolution times. So, we took a particular examples of 2D spectra where we talked about the 2D J result, okay, 2D J result spectroscopy. And there um, the, um, uh, along the two frequency axis we had uh, one axis we had the j, other axis we had the delta. So, this became a 2D separation experiment the two uh, coupling constant is on one axis and the chemical shift is on the other axis. And we are going to go into uh, other kinds of 2D experiments and those are the correlation experiments. However, so, correlation experiments before we actually embark onto the correlation experiments, we need to clarify some of the other concepts and need to define certain terms, some definitions we have to give because this will be required for all our future discussions, for all our future discussions, what sort of a magnetization, how do we generate various kinds of magnetizations, how do we generate different kind of information in different uh, spectra. So, therefore, here we will have to make a slight digression and define certain terms. Okay. So, some definitions we will give here. Some definitions because these are the terms which we will be using all the time. So, uh, in a generalized multiples experiment you have various kinds of evolution periods, preparation periods as I mentioned here and there is what happens is you start from initial magnetization which is here and the magnetization flows through these various time periods. This may be T1, T2, T3, etc. So, the magnetization flows if I want to use a different color for the magnetization it will flow through this and ultimately we collect the data. So, this is called as the magnetization transfer, magnetization transfer or magnetization flow. Okay. So, it goes from one state to another from one T1 period to T2 period to the T3 period and so on and so forth. So, here magnetization flow is something which one has to understand and that determines what magnetization is present in what time period determines what is the information in that time period. When you Fourier transform it in a multidimensional way the information that is present in the T1 will appear as F1, what is present in T2 will appear as F2, what is present in T3 will appear as F3 and so on and so forth. And these various time separations here which are the there can be various kinds of mixing periods here which will allow transfer of magnetization that is why we are talking about magnetization flow. Magnetization terms will have to be defined here. We have to define certain types of magnetizations okay? that is what we will do here. So, let us keep those definitions here now. Let us say we have the term called IKZ. IKZ implies Z magnetization. of spin k okay. and this has to do with the populations of the levels at 
populations of the levels of K spin. which will cause k, k spin transitions ok. Then let us say I have then I have i k x let us say this means x magnetization of the transverse magnetization x magnetization of spin k and we are talking about spin half systems here ok. For all of these let us say we are talking about spin half systems all k l etc whatever label we use i have used as the label k that is to identify the spin k i can use it l m p q r whatever they all indicate different spins and they are all spin half systems okay so therefore and we need two different symbols here similarly if you have i k y i k y would imply y magnetization Okay. Now, among these what is it that we observe? It is the transverse magnetization right when we measure, we measure the transverse magnetization. So, we measure transverse magnetization always measure transverse magnetization and that is i k x or i k y. I k z is not observable ok because you have to convert this z magnetization into the transverse plane bring it to the transverse plane because your detector is in the transverse plane therefore you measure the transverse magnetization. Now if I measure the i k x term if I measure the i k x and after Fourier transformation etc you get the time domain signal you get the f i d for this f i d and if you do Fourier transformation you generate a suppose it is a spin which is coupled to uh, another spin suppose it is coupled to another spin we will generate two components like this this is a doublet of k if it is coupled to some other spin like l ok it will produce an in phase this is called as in phase doublet in phase signal. Similarly you can write for i k y i k y will give you uh, anti phase terms i k y f i d and this may generate you a dispersive signal this is in phase dispersive you can choose either way I mean depends upon where your detector is if I choose i k x to produce this um, uh, absorptive phase then the i k y will produce me dispersive in phase and vice versa. Suppose I put the detector along the y axis and I measure the y magnetization I get absorptive signals for the um, i k y magnetization and i k x will give me dispersive signal. So, it, it, these are interchangeable ok. So, this is one set of terms which we will always use i k x, i k y, i l z and uh, when we have other kinds of what are the other kinds of magnetization terms. Let me define few other types of magnetization terms. So, we also will come across terms something like this i 2 times i k x i l z and this is called as anti phase magnetization of, of k which is anti phase with respect to spin L anti phase with respect to spin L. What does that mean? What does that mean? So, if I take term like this to i k x i l z now I do this is evolves during the generate an f i d from here because f i d generate means this has to evolve various kinds of evolutions will happen. And then of course after you do a FID then I do a Fourier transformation and collect the signal this will generate the same two lines but they will have appearance like this. So, this is called as anti phase magnetization ok. So, i k x i l z this kind of a magnetization this is the magnetization term and which this evolves in the FID free induction decay because there is a J evolution that will happen there 
and after you do Fourier transformation of the resultant magnetization that is will produce you a spectrum which is like this. So, these are called as antiphase signals. Same will apply for 2 IKY ILZ as well. IKY ILZ or uh, I suppose I take ILX IKZ, suppose I do this 2 ILX IZ. What does this mean? This will mean uh, the same sort of terminal we will get, but this is anti phase magnetization of spin L ok this is spin L which is anti phase with respect to spin K. See the KZ indicates that it is with respect to spin K and LX means it is X magnetization this is X anti phase magnetization. Okay. Similarly, I can also have 2 i l y i k z this will be y magnetization of spin l anti phase with respect to spin k. Okay. So, these are the kinds of terms which you will get when we are actually considering a series of transfers from one time period to another time period during the mixing periods. We when you do mixing times during the mixing time we generate transfers from one spin to another spin. See if I go from kx to let us say 2 kx ly uh, 2 kx lz to 2 lx kz it would mean that I have transferred from the k spin to the l spin. So, this sort of transfers will happen when you are doing this mixing periods during the mixing times this sort of transfers will happen ok that is why it is important to understand these terminologies how this will happen ok. So, uh, and there will be other kinds of terms and all of these are so uh, all of these are called single quantum transitions also. So, I will have to uh, explain that in uh, in this context using an energy level diagram there. Suppose I, I am taking a 2 spin system, so then I will have here these are all let us say alpha alpha, alpha beta, beta alpha and beta beta for the 2 spin system. So, I will have transitions here, transitions here, transitions here, transitions here and all of these are delta, these are delta m is equal to plus minus 1 therefore, these are called as single quantum transitions or coherences. And notice when I say transitions and coherences the transverse magnetization always represents the phase coherence between spins whereas the Z magnetization represents populations as I mentioned earlier the trans tra transitions uh, the transverse magnetization refers to single quantum coherences. These are all single quantum because what is m value here? m value here is 1.0, m is 1.0, here it is 0, here it is 0, here it is minus 1. Therefore, the transitions which I have indicated there these are all delta m is equal to plus minus 1. Therefore, these are single quantums. Now, what are the other transitions possible? There are other transitions possible. You can have a transition here. And this is dq double quantum coherence because the delta m is equal to 2.0. These are not directly observable of course, with selection rules when we consider the double quantums are not directly observable, but these will be created in the course of your pathway magnetization flow this kind of this kind of terms will also be created coherences will be created. And then we also have a third kind of a thing possible. Let me see here and this is ZQ 0 quantum. So, ZQ is called 0 quantum coherence
and dq is called double quantum coherence. So, during the magnetization flow such kind of magnetization terms will be created ok. How do we know these ones? What are the kinds of magnetization uh, terms which represent this ok? This is what we will see now here. You can have things such as 2 i k x i l y or 2 i k y i l x or 2 i k x i l x or 2 i k y i l y. This kind of terms indicate these indicate mixtures of double quantum plus zero quantum coherences. A combination of these can create pure double quantum or pure zero quantum ok. Combinations of these can generate pure dq or pure zq ok. So, for example, 2 i k x i l y for example, i x i k x i l y plus 2 i k y i l x this it presents pure d q this is the presence of pure d q. So, similarly I can also make I can also make 2 i k x i l y minus 2 i k y i l x that will represent a 0 quantum. So, such kind of combinations are possible you will generate pure double quantum or 0 quantum or mixtures of double quantum 0 quantums and double quantum or in general multiple quantums or in general these are called multiple quantum coherences. You can also have a triple quantum coherences. But these are not directly observable when you put detector these are not directly observable in a detector and they have to be converted into single quantum coherences for detection, but these can appear in your transfer pathway. So, these are not directly measurable directly measurable in the detector systems but they can appear in the magnetization flow ok. So, therefore, when you are having multiple experiments various kinds of transfers at various places all these kinds of terms will appear. So, and we are going to use this in all these multidimensional NSMRM experiments which we will discuss as various kinds of correlation experiments which I mentioned to you they will uh, we will come across all of these kinds of terms and therefore, it is important to understand what we are talking about here. So, in the uh, in the general scheme which you have various kinds of teams here you can have single quantums here, you can have double quantums here or 0 quantums there or you can have z magnetization, you can have pure double quantum I am just randomly writing here what all things can happen ok coherences and here you have z magnetization. So, these are the pathway this is the pathway along the time and when you detect when you detect here this will be pure this will be single quantum coherences only. You can detect only single quantum coherences and here it because this is the selection rule delta m is equal to plus minus 1 only that thing can be detected. But these ones can appear anywhere in the pathway. So, this actually represents the pathway 
of flow. pathway of flow of magnetization ok. So therefore, one can do design various kinds of experiments at what you want to have in a particular time period. I may want to have single quantums here, I may not want to have single quantums there, I may want to have double quantums there, I may not want to have, I can delete some of those ones, how to manipulate those ones. This is the thing which actually generates the whole lot of experimental schemes which are required for generating a specific type of information in your spectra. And that is what is uh, the power of this multidimensional spectroscopy. You can use different kinds of nuclei, generate different kinds of coherences in this experiment. So, and then I will have terms such as 2 ikz, ilz. I will also have such kind of terms, and this is called as 2 spin order, 2 spin zz order. This can be converted into single quantum or double quantum. This can be converted into can be converted to SQC or DQC or ZQC. All such kind of terms can be there. This is so far as two spins are concerned. Now let us consider what kind of things can happen for three spins. Three spins again I can have let us say these spins are K, L, m suppose I have 3 spins then I can have terms like i k x uh, individual ones i l x i m x these are all m k l m spin magnetizations k l m individually x magnetizations of these are all x magnetizations of k L M spins ok alright. So, and the two, uh, two spin terms will also be available you can make combinations of 2 i k x i l z or 2 i k x i m z and so on and so forth. So, there will be two spin terms also there. Now, there can be three spin terms, three spin terms are like suppose some I have things like that 2 4 i k x i l y i m z. Suppose I have a term like this, I get a term uh, magnetization in the pathway, I get things like that. What does this imply? This will imply dq plus zq of k and l spins antiphase with respect to m, m spin. Note whichever one is z, it is antiphase with respect to m spin. So, this will lead to a particular kind of a pattern in your final spectrum when you generate it. Or that I can also have things like this 4 i k x i l z i m z. So, now I have 2 z parts, transverse is only 1, transverse is only with respect to the k spin, but I will have the z with respect to l and m. So, this will be single quantum single quantum of k antiphase single quantum what transverse magnetization x spin this is x magnetization antiphase with respect to both l and m spins These will generate different kind of terms when you actually uh, do a measurement. So, if you have such a kind of a term, let us take for example, I k x i l z. Now, in the 3 spin system, in the 3 spin system, how will the I k x look like? So, then the 3 spin system is like this, I have the k spin, l spin, m spin and there is a j for each one of those, j 1, j 2, j 3. Let us say if I have those, how will the ikx look like after this generates ifid and, uh, and then you measure the take the ft and this will give me for the k, I am only writing for the k because this is the k spin. So, the k spin will me 4 lines which is a doublet of a doublet right because it is 2 couplings j1 and j3 couplings. 
this will generate a doublet of a doublet. So, if this coupling constants are not equal then it will be doublet of a doublet ok. In the same one suppose I have a term which is like this 2 i k x i l z. So, what it will generate to me this will this term in the f i d and then you do f t and this will produce spectrum like this in the spectrum it will appear like this 2 i k x i l z. Notice here this repeats here positive negative positive negative. So, it repeats this is called as it is antiphased with respect to the L spin ok. Uh, now, suppose I have this kind of a term 4 i k x i l z i m z and this generates an f i d and then I have the f t and this will produce a pattern like this after Fourier transformation. Now you see this is positive or negative this came from the antiphase with respect to the L spin and then again now negative of this. So, therefore, positive negative negative positive ok. So, therefore, for this is plus minus plus minus and here I have plus minus minus plus. So, 2 negatives. So, 1 negative coming from the k to L and the second negative coming from k to m. So, therefore, you get this kinds of a pattern. So, this is the uh, doubly antiphase magnetization. Therefore, this is called as doubly antiphase antiphase magnetization. Okay. Okay. So, all right. Then let me also write one more term, which is to complete the story here. I K X. I L Y I M X or any combinations of those. If I write like this, these are called as triple quantum coherences. Once again, this will not be directly observable, these will have to be converted into single quantum coherences before actually you can observe. And then we will generate the various kinds of spectral features as I indicated in different uh, things like this ok. So, uh, we will be dealing with such kind of uh, magnetization transfer pathways as we go into the multidimensional NMR experiments. In fact, this is when you want to talk about the cosy and, and the nosy and things like that. We, these are required that is why I introduced these ones beforehand so that we will have uh, no difficulty in understanding these uh, kind of situations ok. So, all right. So, then we, I think we can stop here and uh, we go into the next phase into the next class.